The ledges behind Pumpkin Island are covered with gulls, all sitting solemnly, facing the same direction. There is no giggling and cackling as your wake splashes the ledge today. There is no time for seabird sense of humor. We're going to have some weather. It's a coming. She's going to blow with the next shift of the tide. Home on the island, you pull in the sailboat chain, the motorboat fast to its mooring, pull the rowboats high off the beach. Mr. Smith hurries by with a boatload of lobster traps that he has been taking up. Over in Swain's Cove, Mr. Billings puts extra lions on the wings of the, the seaplane. Fishermen put extra lions on herring boats and scalloping boats. At Frankie Day's boatyard, up Benjamin River, and at Hal Vaughn's boatyard, up Horseshoe Creek, Men are working with the tide, pulling up sloops and yawls, catches and motorboats, shackling chains, tying ropes, making things fast, battening down, getting ready. Stack the groceries on the kitchen shelves, bring wood to build a fire, Fill the generator with gas, then take one last careful look. While the calm sea pauses, at dead low water, a mouse nibbles off one last stalk from the garden and drags it into his mouse hole. A spider scurries across his web and disappears into a knot hole. All living things wait while the first surge of the incoming tide ripples past Eagle Island, ripples past Dorigo, past Pickering, past Two-Bush Island, the bell buoy off Spectacle Island sways slightly with the rippling, with the rippling, tolling, tolling, tolling the shift of the tide. Suddenly, the wind whips the water into sharp, choppy waves. It tears off the sharp tops and slashes them into ribbons of spooky, sm of smoky spray. The rain comes slamming down. The wind comes in stronger and stronger. A branch snaps from a tree. A gull flies over, flying backwards, hoping for a chance to drop into the lee of the island. Out in the channel, a tardy fishing boat wallows in the waves, seeking the shelter of Buck's Harbor. <clears throat> A tree snaps. Above the roar of the hurricane, you see and feel but do not hear it fall. A latch gives way. People in papers and parcheesi games are puffed, hair over eyes, across the floor while father pushes and strains to close and bolt out the storm. Mother, mother reads a story and the words are spoken and lost in the scream of the wind. You are glad it is a story you have often heard before. Then you all sing together, shouting the eyes have seen the glory, just as loud as you can shout, with the dish towels tucked by door sills just to keep the salt spray out. The moon comes out making a rainbow in the salt spray, a promise that the storm will, be, will soon be over. Now the wind is lessening, singing loud chords in the tree to tops, lessening, it hums as you go up to bed. And the great swells coming from the open sea say, Shh! Shh! As they foam over the old rock on the point, lessening, the wind whispers a lullaby in the spruce branches as you fall asleep in the bright moonlight. The next morning you awaken to an unaccustomed light made by a frosty coating of salt on all the windows, and out of doors in the gentle morning lie remainders of yesterday's hurricane. Fallen and broken trees are everywhere. On the terrace, on the path, blocking your way at every turn, you
You cannot walk on familiar paths and trails, but you can explore the tops of giant fallen trees and walk on trunks and limbs where no one ever walked before. Then, seeking out more, still more places where no one ever walked before, you explore the jagged holes left by the roots of fallen trees. Under an old tree by the house, you discover an Indian shell heap, and poking in the thousands of snow-white clam shells so old they crumble at a touch, you realize that you are standing on a place where Indian children stood before the coming of white men. Now it is time for one last chore, the hauling of seaweed of hauling seaweed from the beach. To fertilize the garden, spreading the seaweed with its iodine smell, you are pleased to see that the storm-flattened sunflowers are once more lifting faces to the sun, and here are hummingbirds humming a hymn in the morning, making a final round to the last of the petunias. It is time for hummingbirds to leave the island. It is the end of another summer. It is time for you to leave the island, too. Goodbye to clams and mussels, barnacles, to crows and swallows, gulls and owls, to sea urchins, seals, and porpoises. It is time to reset the clock from the rise and fall of the tide, and to come and go, and the come and go of the school bus. Pack your bag and put in a few treasures, some gull feathers, a few shells, a book of pressed leaves, a piece of quartz that came from a crack in the old rock on the point, and children, don't forget your toothbrushes. Then all aboard and around Deer Island, past Birch Island, past Pumpkin Island, and across Egamogan Isle and across Egamogan Reach, for the last time this year, take a farewell look at the waves and sky. Take a farewell sniff of the salty sea. A little bit sad about the place you are leaving, a little bit glad about the place you are going. It is a time of quiet wonder. For wondering, for instance, where do hummingbirds go in a hurricane? That's the end of that book. I've never lived in Maine or even visited, but I've known this book since I was a very small child, and I still really like it. I hope you enjoyed reading it. I'm sure I didn't give you as great of an experience of the art as I could have, but uh, I imagine it's still in print. It's a very popular author, so check it out.